What up? This weekend, I'm going to be in Dallas, Texas. Yeehaw! You don't sound like that. But if you do, don't take offense to it. Come out to the show because I'm going to be at Hyenas Comedy Club tonight, March 12th, uh, through Saturday, March 14th. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. Hyenas is a great comedy club. Uh, it's uh, it's a fun place. It's a fun city. You guys know you live there. If you live nearby, fucking get in the car, put on your spurs, grab your neighbor's Vespa, and fucking cruise on down to the shows. Tonight through Saturday at Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas, Texas. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. Next weekend, leg cross shift, I'm going to be in Vegas all week, baby. March 16th through the 22nd at the Laugh Factory in the Tropicana Casino. It's my favorite gig. Do it once a year. And this year, we're doing it March Madness style. So come out, make some bets, bring your friends, get fucked up, and come see me. Two shows a night, March 16th through the 22nd in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Laugh Factory in the Tropicana. A lot more tour dates. At AdamRayComedy.com, we got uh, Walnut Creek coming up. We got uh, uh, Rochester, New York. We got uh, West Palm Beach. We got San Diego. Uh, and more tour dates are added, so keep on the lookout. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Adam Ray Comedy. Go get my albums, Read the Room, and Songs for the People, available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, all that bullshit. And uh, be sure to uh, set your DVRs for, uh, for April 15th, as I'll be back on Lights Out with David Spade. And June 12th, I know it's a ways away, but Crossing Swords, the cartoon that I'm starring in uh, for Hulu with Seth Green, Tony Hale, Breckenmeyer, and more drops Hulu uh, June 12th from the uh, people that brought you Robot Chicken. So get excited for that. And a lot of great uh, episodes coming up too. Uh, a lot of exciting guests. A lot of exciting, just everything's exciting, you know? I know the the virus is really fucking taking a, 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 a toll on people's uh, spirits, but uh, you know what? If you got it, you got it. <coughs> And I might have it, <laughs> but uh, now, uh, now let's let's just put our worries uh, to to the side and uh, put on your masks, take off your pants, and enjoy a brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast, starting now. you have a new theme song uh yeah i'm getting a, a new like personalized one uh constructed right now oh, but right cool. now we've got uh real big fish you know that band yeah yeah dun, 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 yeah i should probably just sing it it's probably better well go acapella dude <laughs> acapella is where you don't wear shoes Does danny devito like real big fish you know i was a huge fan of the the uh the uh, pop punk scene in in the late '90s, but my wife Rhea Perlman told me that I could no longer go into the mosh pits. Dean, who's your top five bands of all time? Guns N' Roses, Metallica, <laughs> Queens Reich, Zeppelin, <laughs> and I also really love the Monkees. <laughs> Harlan's face. If you could bottle your face and put it into I a wish. peanut butter jar. Oh my God! Crunchy or smoothie? <laughs> yeah. Crunchy. Great question. Which are you? Uh, if I have if I have a breakout and I'm covered with pus riddled zits, I'm crunchy. <laughs> if I'm all clear or sealed up for a Saturday night sock hop up in Bakersfield, I'm smoothie. And uh, I wish you wouldn't be so goddamn nosy. <laughs> uh, what do you? Uh, Harlan Williams back on the About Last Night podcast. Yeah, let's give it up. Clap. We're here. Clap. Uh, we we talked about before we started that uh, we're we're pretty high up right now. And I said, "Oh, are you afraid of heights?" And I was, if you had said yes, I would be like, "I'm sorry. Can we still do this?" But then yeah. I also would have said, "Oh, I didn't know that about you." And I feel like I know a lot about you. Yeah. I think I don't know if that's a fact that you share with someone early on in the uh, in the relationship, like your height anxiety. Yeah. Uh, I think you should. It's probably, if you want to know who you're getting into bed with type of thing. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to forge a friendship with someone, it's probably crucial right up at the beginning of the, you know, friendship to know if that person has a fear of heights or not. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to go out. You don't want to hang out with someone like go to a movie or Chipotle or <laughs> drive through with someone who's afraid of heights. Or a movie about Chipotle. Uh, is there a movie? Probably. God. This fall. Is it? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> this fall. In the mall. 
The yeah. chips are no longer on your shoulder. Chipotle. <laughs> With a C-H. I call it shitpotle. <laughs> You should. Because when you eat that stuff, man. Oh, you, it goes you, right through you. You're like fishing for brown <laughs> trout within half an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm going on a Chipotle cleanse. <laughs> yeah. I call it uh, Turtur King. Like Burger King. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do I, do I have to leave now? Or do I... <laughs> <laughs> There's a three strikes. <laughs> There's something about the, uh, I don't think, well, Taco Bell, I think, owns up to the uh, amount of their food, uh, you know, not being, you know, they, they I think. They it, lean it. They was that they lean into they it. lean into it that it's like it goes right through you and that's yeah. probably not the best for you. Well, when you see a a, bo- a a like a sign when you go by like four tacos for a dollar and you go you know cat food <laughs> is three fifty <laughs> yeah. and you're like why am I eating something that I'm getting why should I just for eat cat th- food right yeah like if, save if a couple cat bucks. food is more expensive. Than your main go-to item at Taco Bell. That's not good, right? What is cat food made of? Taco meat. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Good? They just buy. See, they they make a profit. They buy Taco Bell beef. <laughs> they put it in the can. They could sell it for ninety-nine, but they sell it for three fifty. Didn't you used to have a bit that was? Uh, I remember when I was opening for you. There was a song that you would always just in between jokes, like you would just look down and start singing like. Billy was just a young boy. What, what song was that? Oh, Ricky was a young boy. <laughs> he had a heart of stone. Yeah. Skid Row, brah. <laughs> oh, you just do that in between bits. And that happened right before the first time I ever saw you take somebody's chips. And remember then you would just crinkle them right. into the microphone. Oh. And then and then what's the uh, line that you say after that? Well, I'd pick up a nacho chip. Yeah. And then I'd just hold it and I'd say, you ever fucking old lady? <laughs> And then they'd like look at me and then I'd put the chip on the mic and crush it. And it sounded like, like bones cracking and, uh, never fails. It's a good laugh. Pretty classic bit. Yeah. Uh, but I thought there was a, um, a song, a cat food jingle. You're a big jingle guy. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite, it. uh, jingle or theme song that you've heard in the last, I don't know, 20 years. Oh, I don't know. I always liked, um, pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what, what a relief, relief it is. is. So you knew it. It's Alka-Seltzer. Good. Yeah. It's an oldie. Catchy, quick. Yeah. In that same vein, I love the Pepto-Bismol theme song. What was that one? Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> oh my God. It's actually beautiful. Yeah. I hope that guy's rich. Anyone who's sick. Grammy. It did. <laughs> I could picture KD Lang singing that in her shower. Uh, but anyone who sings the word diarrhea should immediately be lynched and peeled. Yeah. Like they should literally be drawn and quartered. You yeah. Know how pirates used to do they they slice the top of the chest, pull open the chest, and then let the entrails just flop out. Oh god. So if you're going to sing the word diarrhea, you need that fate to happen yeah. to you. You know how most parody songs that like, you make fun of, you like turn it like more dirty or like you take a, a normal song and make it dirty? We should almost make, make these like little jingles and make them like beautiful instead of like, Clean them up. it's got yeah. a good vocal, vocal tones. So well, I think with most jingles, they want them to be just so quick and to the point and have like just enough of a catchy melody to, yeah. to keep you hooked. But I like the one that wasn't a jingle, but it was kind of the, uh, like a saying. It was an old one. I think it was in the 80s. And as you met, you ever buy Pepperidge Farm? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had this old guy's voice, and he'd go, they'd do a whole commercial about a pound cake or a <laughs> fucking layer cake or a lemon loaf. And yeah, some yeah. old guy at the end would go, Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> it's like, it like, remembers what? It's just like, what? It's just like the worst. My like, first <laughs> yeah, was Haunted? What, yeah, what's yeah, about yeah. that happen? weird, creepy ass. What'd the guy look like? You never saw him. It was, a, it was a VO. It was a voiceover. Creepier. It's like a field of dreams. Like instead of, if you build it, it will come. It'd be like, <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm was there that time you skipped on your homework. <laughs> yeah. Pepperidge Farm was in your bathroom. Pepperidge Farm <laughs> slept in your bed when your folks took you out of town for that camping trip. <laughs> yeah. Pepperidge Farm, f- fuck your mom. Whoa, uh, yeah, guy. That's, you know. Put it right into neutral, <laughs> click it into reverse, and back up, bro. <laughs> Bakersfield's in the rearview window. Have you been to Bakersfield? Hell yeah, guy. To do what? 
I was there for a priest party. I love priest parties <laughs> on the weekend. Okay, well, if you're going to laugh, maybe this uh, isn't the podcast for me. <laughs> You've never had a priest party, bro? No. I got one this Saturday. I got up in uh, Burbank. I got six priests coming in from uh, Glendale. To do what? And I got, you just get there. You'll see. <laughs> You don't need to ask. Does anyone know what happens at these parties? You'll, you'll know when you get there. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh, whoa, guy. <laughs> but uh, no, you got you to come out to one. They're I would a love blast. It. Well, I'll tell you what you, I really... You're like. into priests, right? Do you like priests? Yeah, I don't mind them. Okay, you're going to love this. Starts at midnight up at the uh, up in Glendale. <laughs> we'll send you the address. and We got six from Glendale, and I think we got four coming in from... Uh, Chico Riverside or something yeah yeah what do you do I need to bring anything nope just show up we got everything there dress code nope just wear whatever you want it won't be on long (laughs) (laughs) does the band priest play nope no it's just you got black robes white collars a lot of mingling um sponsor we have a sponsor hellman's mayonnaise oh no and staples staples is getting in on the priest staples, party the, um the the uh the printer paper yeah the, the store. convenience store yeah, yeah or whatever what do you is. call a store like staples an office, office supply, supply office right supply, yeah. yeah so we're miracle whip or mayonnaise we got, got hellman's mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Hellman's oh, okay. mayonnaise. i thought you like father's doing miracles whip you into you want you into priest bro you want a party on the weekend I'm going to work the party as a bartender. <laughs> you are? Yeah. You guys hiring? Is it minimum wage uh, plus tips? We'll or? Just show up. We'll, we'll, fit, we'll, we'll fit you in, as they always say. <laughs> tips and giggles? They yeah. do say that. <laughs> they'll tips fit and you giggles. in. Yeah. Uh, Hart, there is one thing. I'll take a rain check on the priest party, but oh. I'll tell you what I'm definitely coming to is Burning Man. Oh, you're going this year? Yeah. We oh, talked about good. this last time I saw you, and I, that's a hard Well, you know commitment. you got to sign up like within the next two weeks. Great. Because if you don't, you won't be able to get eligible Great. for the tickets. I'm Great. glad you mentioned Signing it. Signing up. Do you know how to do it? No, but I'll get the deets from you. I'll tell you right now. Okay. You go to burningman.com, and it, there's a, it says burner profile, and you create a profile. Okay? So you write, it's just like creating an email for yourself. Okay. You get, write your name and a password, then you're in the system, and then uh, in the beginning of April, I think it's the first week in April... They do the lottery where they give away 70,000 tickets and you sit in front of your computer for about an hour and this green bar just starts scrolling along. And if, if you get randomly selected, your screen lights up and they go, congratulations, you got two tickets. So you, you'll have to sit in front of your computer for an hour and see if you made it in. That sounds fun. It's kind of exciting. Smoke a little blunt and just yep. uh, let the computer change colors. Oh, you got to come, man. If you're serious, you got to come. I'm man. very serious. Well, your stories in, enlighten the group on some of these. But, uh, you know, I think there's a different version of Burning Man that, that you can have, right? There's, oh, yeah. It can you be can, anything you want. You can go. No one's there completely sober, are they? Yeah, I actually drove two sober people up two years ago. They needed a ride up. and <laughs> two, two, two years ago. <laughs> they were so, They were sober. Uh, you, you met them on the street? I met or? them. No, they're friends from here in L.A. But wow. it's anything you want. Everyone thinks if you go to Burning Man, you got to be ripped or on hallucinogenic. It can be whatever you want. There's you people take that don't touch You MAD thing. and a Plan B and just You fucking... could take NyQuil and rub it on your areolas and pretend you're a retarded jellyfish. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and you will. Well, I know what I'm doing on Friday. There you go, Captain Hindgrinder. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how far away is it? I don't even know where. It's, a, it... it's about a 10-hour, 11-hour drive. Jesus. Straight north. It's you can't almost... fly? You can fly in, but that's some big bucks. It is. But part of the fun is the drive up there. It's part of the journey. You rent an RV, oh, you drive up, you drive in. Driving in's exciting because it's like you're driving into this desert. In the middle of nowhere. Middle and of you're nowhere. You're seeing everyone else probably on the freeway, starting to see like yep. other RVs. You're seeing and other like, RVs. Ah! Yep. And then when you get into Burning Man, it it it's like I would say it's like Star Trek beaming to another world. You'll never go to a place in your life like Burning Man. It's that it's that amazing uh have they thought about changing it just because of the current climate to burning woman at any point uh, burning person <laughs> burning, burning person. person yeah um i, I you know that's a consideration but because there's a ge- i hope they don't yeah you know i'm tired of all this changing everything because of genders yeah like you know they're they're making thor apparently now a young black girl they're making james bond a black woman 
they're making, and I don't care if they're black or Asian or Hispanic yeah. or whatever, but they're changing the gender and <laughs> they're starting to change all these things. I'm like, okay, let's make Wonder Woman a dude. Yeah. Let's make Black Panther white. Let's do you know? it. But no, it's so, so it's like, but what I don't, I don't care about color. I just don't like that they're taking things that are established. Like, why can't we have James Bond be a gallivanting, you know, womanizing, drunk, kind of cool super spy? That's what we've always loved about him. That's what he is. Let him live him in that pedestal. world. Nobody knows a guy like that. Yeah. So when you watch Bond, you go, well, now I feel like I've got uh, right. And, an and what, what really irks me is they act like in the '70s and the '80s and the '90s when that that those movies were hitting their stride. Yeah. He was a blatant womanizer. He was blatantly like sexualizing women. He was dealing with characters called Pussy Galore and Chew Me. And yeah. does anybody <laughs> think for one minute that that you know th- that it wasn't just like a spoof? Like it wasn't just like g- goofy? Did, yeah. did anyone sit there and think, oh, this is how men behave or should behave? No. That's the beauty of movies. You live vicariously through these ridiculous characters. Plus, there's and now they've n- taken all the fun out of it. Yeah. There's other numbers available too. There's 008, 009, right? Can we have different agents of different kind of with different yeah. kind of backgrounds? We don't unretire a number. Larry Bird's not, you know, he didn't give away number 33, did he? 007. Wait, so there's new numbers for We should. No, we could. there could be other spies in the same agency, you know, the James Bond cinematic universe. Yeah. 009 and a half over here, if you know what I mean. <laughs> nice. I'm a 002. <laughs> oh, I meant you, Sandy. I pointed at you for the nine and a half. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> it's also like, and we went and saw Avengers Endgame together. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure you guys loved it. Uh, I wanted to love it. We hated it. Hated it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was like the, what we said was it was like they took the, the Avengers movie before it, which was great. Yeah. Where all the Avengers died at the end. Yeah, that was so cool. And then they said, well, how do we... How do we fix this? Oh, yeah, we'll get a time machine and undo everything they just did in that great movie we just saw. And have the Hulk work at Sprint. Yeah, yeah. Right? Sprint with, with uh, designer glasses and Starbucks. Is that like, real? Sorry, guys. I'm. Uh, can you come back later? I'm trying to oh, help this kid so out with bad. his family plan. You're like, yeah. what? And then the amount of crying in the first oh. 20 minutes, Harlan and I looked at each other like, are we both just... Yeah. Did we just take? Uh, too I don't much? mean. Did he really work at a Sprint store and sell? Was you guys making that up? No, that's real. As soon as someone's it's flying, a cell phone yeah, store. Yeah, it's like they're yeah. they were trying to like normalize yeah. these guys, and this was like part of the, the Hulk. I mean, the Hulk eats cell phones like shreddies. You know, he eats them like like light check cereal. I don't want to see the Hulk <laughs> with his shirt on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't even want to see him with his. Pants on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can we cut the commercial? <laughs> they're redoing the Hulk too as a transgender dwarf. Oh great! I, I, you know what? I believe it. That's what's sad. <laughs> the Hulk. Yeah, he's but, tiny. <laughs> but every every but moment, really, was, really angry. Every <laughs> yeah. every uh, every Christian scene was like, you know, Thor would come out and he'd be like, "Hey, Iron Man," and he's like, "What?" He's like, "Did you hear the news?" And he goes, "What?" He's like, and somebody died, and it was just, and then there was something happened, and then it was like cut to another yeah. scene, and there was like, "Good to see you," uh, you know, fuck, I don't remember any of the characters' no, names. No, yeah, I can't either. Like, Good to see you, Barb, you know, and then uh, whoever Scarlett Johansson was, who, who'd she play? That was Barb. Yeah. Barb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say nose ring. No, whoever she was, and Black she's Widow. Black Widow, and then she goes off to the edge of a cliff, and 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 uh, and so, who else was there? Toby Maguire. Who else was in it? Toby Maguire. No, uh, somebody. Heath uh, Ledger. Heath Ledger. Should have been no. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. Seagal. Devito wasn't in it. I I actually auditioned to play uh, Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the Jewish attorney that represented it, uh, the yeah, Avengers? Well, it's, yeah, it's uh, Tony Stark's attorney, Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the lines from that audition? Uh, uh, yeah. I can see why you didn't get it. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> hard do uh, would you ever want to be in one of those movies? You know what I'm uh, saying? Like when Transformers obviously like uh, got real big, you could tell they were always like putting in somebody for true comedic effect, right? To kind yeah, of be yeah. the guy that didn't maybe maybe you know that worked on the the cars or like didn't get why they were so. Uh, weren't you in one? Weren't you Rocket Man? What's that? Weren't you in one? Rocket Man? <laughs> 
Am I wrong? Yeah, but that oh, was that a, wasn't a superhero. That wasn't a superhero movie. movie. I haven't. I've seen, You're I, thinking of Rocketeer. Okay, Rocketeer. A lot of people mix that one up. They do. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, would you? Yeah, I would love. Who, who wouldn't? I mean, I'd love to be a you know play a superhero in one of those movies. It'd be a blast. Do you ever watch one and like identify with one and go like, oh, that's like, I'm gonna like you know push myself to maybe get into the captain. Like, if they were like, hey, Har, we actually uh, thinking about you as like Captain America's dad, so we're gonna need you to uh, <laughs> Captain uh, American Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I actually was Spider-Man for a brief moment at the beginning of my like stand-up and acting career. Where? Uh, when I was still up in Toronto, there was a company that was, uh, they put out a casting call for Spider-Man for public appearances, for, for showing up at baseball games and outdoor concerts and stuff to just be a, a walking presence and do autographs and pictures and stuff. But it, it was a legit company. Yeah. And I was a huge Spider-Man fan, so I, I showed up, and I was probably about you know thirty-five pounds lighter, and and um, and I remember I went to this audition, and they actually provided us with a really cool like Spider-Man suit. It was like really was it awesome tight, and it was like really. And uh, did you move well in it? And I, I I got in it, and when I ran into the room, I didn't even stop to like stop on my mark to say. I just ran to a wall and just kind of like. <laughs> Pretended Sucked I in. stuck to it, and and uh, I just started like looking around, and and I had a pr pretty good physique for it. I, I I wore the costume well, and I actually got the the part. They oh my God. they hired me as Spider Man, but it was right when I was moving to Los Angeles from Toronto, so I got the part, and I, I had to leave like two weeks later, so I never got to act no. out. Yeah, I never got to walk around at the opening of cats as spider-man or you know, <laughs> the new used car parking lot <laughs> crazy sal's the opening of the popeye's chicken sandwich yeah, here's spider-man <laughs> licking his spider fingers <laughs> accidentally shoots web down his throat and chokes to death well uh i wonder I if he's ever wiped his ass and accidentally <laughs> webbed up his a-hole and <laughs> probably like clogged himself yeah because they shoot out of his fingertips right, right? So he's, what if he wiped to get his ass there? and he like clog, clogged up his arse oh, with just web. Gets a nice little poop net going? Yeah. <laughs> From the makers of Dragnet. <laughs> poop net. <laughs> they were really reaching for that oh, second God, sequel. Yeah. Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you're enjoying the episode. Man, it's good to be back. And you know what? The best part about being back is sharing the goodies with you, the fans. I love candles, okay? You know from listening to this podcast, we've always had candles living around the apartment and now my new place. And um, I'm tired of buying the bullshit candles from the store. I want some personal touch. I want something handmade. So that's why I found Hangover Candle Company. That's right. Homemade by a bartender in Fort Collins, Colorado. He's a big comedy fan, podcast fan, reached out, said, I love the pod, would love to some, send you some candles. I'm like, I'm not comfy giving you my address. He's like, come on, trust me. I was like, all right, let's roll the dice. Boom. Now I've got fucking 40 different flavors of Hangover Candle Company candles in my place. Um, they're cut, sanded, poured, packed, and shipped all by him. Um, and you can choose from over 200 different containers, okay, to build your candle in and over 40 different scents to create your own uh, smell. You can customize your own scents. Shit, man, they've got flavors like uh, fucking root beer, apple pie, cinnamon stick, coffee, fresh cut grass, uh, hazelnut, lavender, leather, maple syrup, peach, pine, sandalwood, spearmint, sea breeze, vanilla bean, watermelon. Go to Hangover Candle Co. Uh, on Etsy, okay? Go to Etsy, type in Hangover Candle Co. It'll pop up at the shop and then pick your candles, and then use the promo code ALN25 at checkout to get 25% off your first order. 25%! Hangover Candle Co. is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, but again, go to Etsy, type in Hangover Candle Co., find the candles and the smells you want, create your own, and then use ALN25 at checkout to get 25% off your first order. I love candles. They're great for any occasions, bar mitzvahs, circumcisions, uh, uh, fucking weddings, funerals, gender reveal parties, uh, divorce parties, uh, coming out parties, coming in parties, coming parties. These candles are the shit, and they're my fave, and I want you guys to have them. So type in Etsy. Dot com and then type in Hangover Candle Co. and uh, and pick your candles and use ALN25 at checkout for 25% off. All right? Start smelling better. Start looking better. Start feeling better. Okay? Because everybody farts and candles are a great way to get rid of that. And now back to the episode. Uh, I wish we had a Spider-Man suit because we're close to the boulevard. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And I and I know how you love impromptu. Oh my God, have you seen ups. these whack jobs? I there used to be a grocery store right on Hollywood Boulevard. There by, still is. Oh, there is. Oh, Oh, wait, below the, the L.A. Fitness. Yeah, there right? was a, a Fresh and mm-hmm. Tasty. Fresh, yeah. Smart. And, and it was below. Smart and Easy? No, yeah. what is Fresh yeah, and yeah. Tasty. Fresh, fresh and Tasty. Fresh and Easy. I fucking fresh love and Fresh and Slutty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was it was rated like Hollywood and Highland yes. pretty much. Like yes. right in the mi- And I used to go to the gym there. And then afterwards, like at 9 o'clock at night, I'd Me go too. down and get my groceries. And I swear to God, like every now and then I'd be like picking up a meatloaf. <laughs> And I'd turn and Superman would walk by with Wonder Woman. And I'm like, what the? Like, they'd, they'd be in costume and they'd go down there to, like, get away from the crowds yeah. and buy. Because it was one of those supermarkets that sold the prepackaged sandwiches. Yeah. and It was, like, fresh until, like, 930 that night. Yeah. But for Superman, it's like, you know. He's like, hey, he's like, Arlen, hey, cottage cheese is two for five. Yeah. And you're like, dude. Don't break the fourth wall right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was just so bizarre. It that's was surreal. I know. That's what's great about this town, though, right? Is yeah. Like, even, Halloween's my favorite in Los Angeles because oh, yeah. you drive by any diner, a Denny's, an IHOP, a Mel's, you'll see a guy dressed as Batman with a guy dressed as Trump and a guy dressed as Jack Sparrow just fucked up sharing a plate of flapjacks. Oh, yeah. But they look super convincing because oh, everyone's yeah. like knows a professional makeup artist and, and wardrobe person. Oh, yeah. And, they, and if they stay in character, that's the best. Oh, you know what the coolest one was about, I guess it was about two years ago, I drove up the street right over by uh, Sunset and Fairfax yeah. is the street where they shot Halloween. Oh, no way. And I drove, on Halloween, I drove past the house and there was a guy standing there in like a, a perfect Michael Myers. He had the knife. <laughs> he had the mat, the gray. Like it was so creepy because there he was, and he was just standing there. He he probably came from across the country or something. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna. St-. It was at the actual house where they shot Halloween. So it was really. It was actually kind of. I kind of loved it. Fuck it was yeah. really cool. Do you, you geek know? out on all the? Uh, you know, I, I try to get become more and more cognizant of like the the landmarks that are. You know, I think there's the, uh, is it the Ghostbusters uh, firehouse is like downtown, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, where uh, Sigourney Weaver, um, like, you know, uh, 69, somebody is like next to the yeah, fat yeah. burger. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Wow. That's, there's, yeah. there's, that's in a movie, but it, I can't remember where it happened. Yeah. But there's a lot of those spots or like um, the Safari Inn from uh, True Romance, right? Yeah. Is that's that on Olive in yeah. Burbank. That's where we're doing the priest party. For real? Yeah, Safari Inn. <laughs> what room? Uh, 699. It's just one room? That's yeah. a joke. It's just one room? Yeah, one room. How many people get invited to this thing? You'll see when you get there, guy. <laughs> just You're going to have a Beverly blast. Farm. It's actually a pre-party for Burning Man, so you have to go? <laughs> yeah. Months in advance. Yeah. Wait, now, back to Burning Man real quick. Yeah. They burn the actual... The, the, this is why it's called that, right? Yeah. Is because... They burn the man. They burn the man. So every year they build a giant, like 70, 80 foot tall man image, kind of an abstract image of a man out of wood. And every year they hire a different artist. So it's 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 a different rendition of a wooden man. One year he's felt, next year he's got a dad bod. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like it, it's always different, but it's sort of in this, it's always in the shape of a, of a, of a, a human. What do they make about it that, truly differentiates it from a woman like is there just like uh well a it's called burning man and there's no like no breasts or no hips or anything it's clearly like just a man but it's a little bit ambiguous so you could probably you know put whatever you want on it but the the sentiment with burning man is that when they burn it it rep it's representative of you burning up all your baggage all your emotional baggage and burning the man is like letting everything go and when they light it all your whatever is tormenting you or weighing you down or any maybe it's something spiritual you want to go up into the ether it's like can you put articles like do you need to how can you truly get the best connection and result from that experience? Do you have to like touch the Burning Man before, or do you put like uh, tie something to it? And so, well, it burns? it's interesting. You you can go and touch it and everything before they burn it, but the day they burn it, they put a huge perimeter around it because oh, yeah. it's dangerous. But there's probably people too that are might be just fucked up enough that are just like, I'm going with someone. You, did you know? 
yeah, the third year I was there, I watched the guy. He did it right in front of me. A guy, the guy was there. The the guy jumped into the flames. He was he was literally right in front of me. It blew my mind. I saw did the you whole talk thing. To him? No, but I saw him. I saw him. He he, out of the huge circle. You got to remember, seventy thousand people in a wow. massive circle, and he did it right in front of me. And I was like, holy crap! It was it was pretty startling. It was hard to watch. Yeah. He, but um, you got it. There's no way that you're not just on everything. If that's yeah. Well, book, he have right? you ever seen videos of like these crazy people that at a baseball game or a football game, they'll jump on the field and then they'll yeah, run and it. the guards will chase them yes. and then they'll evade them. And yes. it's kind of happy and funny. It's awesome. So that's what this guy was like. He came running out of the crowd. The, the, the f- flames were probably, I'd say, burning 100 feet high and wow. about 60 Peak feet burn. wide. Oh, wow. We were back the length of a football field and a half and it was almost so hot we had to move that's how intense it is and this guy this guy just ran they they have a line of of guys in like full-on fire suits like fire retardant like suits that like kind of uh, deflect the the heat so they create a wall perimeter between the crowd and the burning man and so this guy started running and he started taunting and and evading like they'd try to grab him and then he'd skip away and dance away and the crowd actually thought he was just goofing with them so the crowd was cheering so he created a fucking a whole he created a thing and then in the last moment he just he a guard just missed him and he turned and he ran and he literally put his hands together like this and left the ground and dove into the flames and then I, all I saw was one of these heroic like guards. Like I couldn't believe it. He no risked his own life. He, he did everything he could, and he just reached in and grabbed him by his feet and pulled him out. And then seven other guys came, and once he was out, they pulled him and dragged him on. And he was just smoldering. And I went, oh, "That wow. guy's dead." And he, he was. You can't even breathe in that heat. It would just right. incinerate. You know, just taking a breath would cook your insides. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, this thing, like I said, we were a football field and a half back, and we almost had to get up and move. That's how hot it is. I mean, you're talking 100 foot high flames, 60 feet wide. And this guy jumped in it, man. But what do you think was going on? Just. He looked like he. they, they, They said he wasn't on anything. And this is a guy out of family. He had kids. He was there with 16 friends. So all his friends watched him do it. Fuck, was there one person in that group that was just like, I bet you can't jump in the fucking... You never know. But I, I think he, he looked euphoric, and yeah. I don't know if he was high or not high. He certainly looked like it, but whatever he was, he made a choice to go, this is it, and he, he Isn't that also in. the power of, of, not peer pressure, but just the, the power of perform Like, this guy probably had done that in other aspects of his life where... He went down and was creating this spectacle and people were cheering like maybe, maybe he felt like I'm putting on a show. How do I take this up a notch? Well, the other thing is, you know, fire is very seductive. If you've ever yeah. even sat at a campfire, mm-hmm. you'll notice people will just stare and you just find yourself getting hypnotized by the flame. You you just stare into them. You know, you feel the heat and you watch the flames dance. And so I have to imagine if this guy was tripping. And here's this wall of flame going up to the heavens. He probably just, wow. if I'm getting in his shoes for a minute, he probably just went, I'm coming, you know, and he just, it's, he just dove in. Like man, it was, maybe he heard something. He maybe he saw have, the burning man say something to him. Maybe. But to your other point, you, yeah. you can't leave things with the burning man. Okay. But what people don't know about burning man, there's a very spiritual aspect to it. And so just like every year they build the, the, a new burning man, they have a thing called the temple and every year they build a giant temple out of wood and it's every year they hire a new architect to do it so some years it's this tall pointed thing that looks like a church another year it looked like a thai monks monastery Fuck. i mean this year it looked like a big giant last year it looked like a big giant like kind of rubik's cube thing it, the, the phenomenal artwork but People go in and they leave things there. They leave luggage. They leave pictures. They leave pictures of their pets. They leave uh, photographs, rubber masks, anything. Nice. You can leave bracelets. Like it's it's the walls are covered with personal items. Glow in the dark butt plugs. Anything. You, I bet they're there. But <laughs> you've never been to a place, a synagogue, a church, a temple, 
where you walk into this place, and I don't know if you've ever walked into fog, but yeah. walking into this temple, it's like walking. The minute you go in the door, it's like walking into a wall of emotion. The people that are in there crying and praying, and it's non-religious, it's right. non-denom, it's just it's just a temple to to pray and worship. But it's to worship and pray for whatever you want. And when you walk in, man, there's there, there's so much stuff in there. I want to go now. Who got oh, you into, it's who powerful. Got, who got it's you into this? What's that? Who got you into this? Uh, actually, a friend of mine, Julia Vatha, is doing a sitcom a few years ago, and she was one of my castmates. And she and it's it's really funny because she she came back from from the hiatus. Yeah. And she was so energized by this festival, and we, I think we've all mm-hmm. we had all heard about it, right? So she had a whole group around. She's like, "Oh my God, this festival! It's so amazing! You got to go!" And everyone in the group was just kind of repulsed. Everyone was like, "Oh yeah, oh." <laughs> I thought you'd say be into it, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, totally. "Oh, but the, everyone had that." And yeah. this is the reaction I get from most people yeah. when I say, "Oh, it's drugs." Yeah, that thing's for hippies. It's, and whenever I see that, like I saw everyone go negative, and I went. Here's this girl that's bubbling with joy. Mm-hmm. She's telling us about something she wants to share She's with into us. It and everyone's like, "Shut the!" It was fuck a beautiful up. moment for her. She's exuberant, and I thought, "Why is everyone pissing on it?" I said, "You know what? I'm gonna fucking go." So I told her, "I said, you know what?" She said, "Come," and I said, "I'm I'm gonna go." And I went, and I've been. This will be my. If I go this year, it'll be my fifth time. That's awesome. Wow! It, it, it was. I took Michael Rosenbaum with me uh, the second time I went. He he didn't want to go. He loved it. He Here's an interesting story. The day before we were supposed to go, his dog lost his sight. He loves his dog. His dog went blind. Oh, my God. Can you do that as a dog? Just lose it in it one day? It just went. It just it went overnight. His It was the day before we were supposed to go. Oof. And he said, he said, Har, I don't think I can go. My dog just went blind, and I, I said, I said, okay, well, let's talk about this. I said, you've got an assistant, full-time assistant. I said, your dog's gone blind. There's nothing you can do. I said, why don't we do this? I said, let your assistant take the dog to the vet, everything they can do. I said, there's one thing we can do. I said, let's go keep our plans to Burning Man. I said, print up a picture of Irv. That's the name of his dog. Print up a picture of Irv. Bring it to Burning Man. And the first thing we'll do, we're going to go to the temple. We're going to put the picture up and we're going to pray that Irv gets his eyesight back. So Michael, one of He's his, very skeptical, right? He was skeptical. He wasn't going to go. I said, just, I said, trust me, we're going to go pray. And he's, I don't think he's a praying guy. So one of his fans had bought him a stuffed toy that looked exactly like his dog. So we didn't have a, photo he had this plush toy of a a (laughs) identical thing of his dog i said yeah bring it so we got to burning man that night the next morning we got on our bikes first thing we we drove out to the temple like i said walking into old people crying and sobbing and there's pictures of people's loved ones and pets and everything there and i said i said michael just walk around till you feel a spot and then we'll put herb there and we're gonna pray and we walked around and we found this little spot and we were with this other girl named D, a friend of ours. Yeah. And we held hands and we just prayed. We were like, dear God, please bring Irv's sight back, please. You know, we, we, were, we were weeping. Get emo- I was going to say. Was, it was heavy. It was, it was like heavy, but we were full on praying. Like that's the beauty of this place. And I, again, it's not a religious, it's non-denominational. And there's people right next to you praying as well? Yep, everywhere. You can praying hear for people whatever you want. crying. Yeah, it, it's, it's really I powerful. I missed that pair of pants that I bought from, and, fu- like, yeah. it could be anything. It could be and, anything. Is yeah. it indoor or is it like? It's indoor, but it, it, it's, it's like it's open. Like there's, yeah. there's openings in the wood and it's so it's kind of a mixture it. but it is it's it's just covered over and, it's and did beautiful. they burn that they burn that too they burn that the the very last night they do so they burn the man the second night the second last night and then they burn the temple on the very last night oh wow so and people watch all their stuff go up so you're crying so we're Rain crying forth. we're praying and um and uh you know we get through that we ride back to our camp and it's hard to get phone reception out there because part of it is to block that, you know, that they try to turn you off. Oh, they from, want you to disconnect from the world. Yeah. But they first, make the man a, ta- a cell phone tower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make the burning man a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, somehow Michael got a signal and his, his, his assistant um, 
FaceTimed them, and we're all there. And uh, she goes, Michael, you have to see this. And this was like within 10 minutes of us getting back to the trailer. And she th- was throwing the ball for the, the dog, and the dog was getting it. She goes, he can see. Wow. And it was just like, it was a mind blower. Oh I actually God. I actually filmed all of it, and I, I made a documentary that I'm going to be putting out soon of the whole our whole journey. Are you serious? Yeah, it's it's hilarious, but it's also really moving. Yeah, it's Sandy and I got to go. We got to revive our careers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's bring our. Oh, IMDb you should go. Page. You should bring my SAG it. card and burn it in the tunnel. <laughs> you guys would love it. No, it's, I would. I love I'm re- like that. I desperately want to. go. It's a surreal experience. I would love to go. We should all guys. go. We okay. should all go. Do you make your own bike, Harlan? Yeah, you need to take a bicycle. Do, do you make your own? Did you make your own bike, or do you have? No, I bought an electric bike because it's a huge yeah, place. It's a totally. huge. Not only is the, the the area where all the campers are, but then you're out on. It's the second largest flattest surface on planet Earth. It's it's a dry lake bed, a 500 mile wow. long lake bed. Wow. Do they have bird scooters there? They have all kinds of scooters. They got art cars. They got. And like, you go into Reno. It's near Reno, right? Like, it's we, east, east, uh, northeast of Reno. Northeast. Yeah. Cool. It's on an Indian reservation up there. I've and, never uh, seen you this serious. It's nice. It's, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a trip. You've ever been about man. You'll, 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 it's some, you'll never do anything like it in your life. Well, I'm all about, look, you know, there's been a handful of things that I've, because I had a similar uh, feeling and uh, just kind of, um, you know, uh, thoughts about, the experience when I would hear about it. And even, I don't know if from you, because I saw you so jovial about uh, your your um, recollections of it. So yeah. I was immediately on board and, and just trusting of, of what you went through. But, but shit, man, I mean, I... You know, I didn't want to study abroad in London when uh, my junior year of college for fear of missing out on stuff or whatever. I, yeah. My mom pushed me I to at least audition, went, ended up being unbelievable. Right. I was supposed to go to uh, uh, Israel two different times on a birthright trip. It didn't end up happening because of things and I had to cancel, which I feel really bad about. And now something like this where you can also tell when you when someone says something to you about any experience like this, you have like an initial response, which is either like, fuck, that sounds fun. Or like, oh, that's just not me. Right. Yeah. And my initial one was like, oh, that sounds incredible. Uh, and I want to see what that's like. You know, Susan Sarandon, actually, we had her on the podcast uh, three, four years ago. I met her in New York when I was doing shows at Gotham with Michael McDonald. He knew her from Mad TV Days. We all went out after she started talking about it and even oh, yeah, invited me to go with her and some people. Oh, talk about dude, you should have gone. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not an adver- I'm not a, a sponsor for the Burning Man or anything, but it's, if you want to, if you want something different in your life that's very artistic and weird and eclectic and spiritual and. The spiritual aspect sounds more, uh, you know, exciting than, uh, than I would. Uh, it is. It's, a, that, it's an element you people don't really think of when they go because I think everyone just hears drugs, this, drugs, that. and you can do that if you want. But yeah, and I will. You, but but you I will. Think, yeah, you are. But right do they now. have to be mutually exclusive? I mean, come on. No, they yeah. don't. You can you can make it whatever you want. You but don't I, have to touch a thing. You'll I be amazed no matter what you do. I would just kind of want to get real high and bike around and people watch and like oh, yeah. giggle and love just you, you if you you bring would, a couple snacks you would love it you would love what it. did you let go of do you want to name one thing that you let go of when you were there or no is when that, i was there pre- yeah or is that uh pre- this year i actually i i had i had a lot of people in my life that were going through some personal issues like uh, family members and friends that it was just one of those rough years where yeah. a lot of people i knew were dealing with a lot of things and so uh, at one point when I went up to the temple, I just literally, I found a place that felt right to me. And I just literally stood there and I put my head on the wall and I just like kind of went like this with my hands and pretended, I, you know, f- was feeling whatever was there. And I, I stood there for probably almost an hour just praying for everyone, my friends, everyone I know. I just prayed for the world, you know. Wow. And everyone that was going through some some hard times, it was it was it was a weird thing because you're kind of vulnerable. You know, you're standing there doing this thing, but I was just letting it happen and feeling it. And, and there was nobody on the other side. No, I was up against the wall right, of the temple, but there was checking. people around yeah. me, and it was really interesting because I stayed there for about an hour and did it, and it was very powerful. And then finally, I took a deep breath and I stepped back and I just you know looked around at the beautiful sky, and when I looked back a guy had gone right into my spot and was doing the exact same thing. 
Whoa. And I thought, wow, that's cool. I, <laughs> I, I must have channeled or created some kind of energy. And, and then he was there doing what I had done, which yeah. no one else was doing. And it was just... It was just neat stuff like that happens there, you know? It also feels like in these current times, like the the escape is, uh, I think, overlooked. Like a situation like this where you can, I know that there are these, um, you know, no technology social media retreats that people yeah. go on. Have you ever yeah. done one of those or heard about no. them? I know Neil Brennan did one a little bit ago where it's like, I think for a week you go to like a, I don't know, a fucking Quiznos or a brothel somewhere. <laughs> somewhere where there's no I love it, dude. I want to. How about to be just go to your house and shut your phone off? You know, there's an <laughs> off button on your phone. Yeah. You don't have to spend like 20 grand on a camping trip to Yellowstone. But then, I yeah. a thousand percent agree. Yeah. I, I don't ridiculous. know what it is about the. Yeah. What is. Yeah. The people that do get sucked into those things about like, I'm going to go. Maybe they also are looking for an excuse to take a vacay. Yeah. But yeah, I. Um, it's also they want people to see him do it. Does it count if no one saw you do it? If you're just in your apartment right. alone, not talking to anyone, you don't get any credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. that's what's cool about Burning Man because you, you you know they they kind of promote shutting all that stuff off. They do have a couple of stations where if you really need it, like you can drive to a place where they have a signal. But most people want to just shut it off when they get there. Yeah. You know, it's it's, and you're in such a surreal world that you you kind of don't want the invasiveness of of the rest of the world Fuck you, no. you want to be kind of in this place and 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 it's so artistic and spiritual and eclectic that you're like don't don't interfere with this moment yeah don't you know? take away my buzz yeah. first time i ever did mushrooms we walked through will rogers state park oh my and, god and uh, we found this little nook there was like a little creek and uh, that my buddy nova stomped in for about a good 20 minutes and we all wow. looked, it was right when we've all started tripping about eight of us and we're like nova what are you doing he's like i'm soaking up as much creek as possible you never know when it's going to be creek season again <laughs> just, <laughs> cr just crying laughing but we're it. sitting there and we were by ourselves for a good hour and a half right yeah. talking to bugs taking in the sights and sounds i'm staring at the sun i would go going through a tough breakup from a girl in college just completely like you said like just had this moment in this in this uh this 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 time of clarity where i just kind of let it all go in one moment and then looked over and there was a little bug being like you're gonna be all right and i was like who the fuck are you and uh and then out of nowhere after about two hours of hanging and being removed from the world this couple comes around a corner and we all started to panic, right? And they were they were as close to me. I was the first one that was like could see them. So I see them coming around this corner, and I go, "Oh, hey, go!" I go, "Guys, guys!" And they're like, "What?" I go, "People!" And they're like, "What the fuck?" And I go, eh. "And I go, say something to them." So I I go, and they get closer on the corner, and, and they just kind of look up and see us, and we're all sitting there in different pockets of this little nook, and I just go. So did you, did you guys uh, did fuck and we all just start laughing because I couldn't get anything out and then they start laughing and we're all crying and then the guy just goes man you guys are on some fucked up shit and we all start <laughs> laughing harder and then the and then the wife goes oh well then that's great you guys if you're fucking tripping balls you're gonna love this there's a fence right up this hill and one of our buddies goes a fucking fence slow down lady and then we start laughing even harder and she goes it's a piece of history and got like really. <laughs> upset that we didn't want to go check out this fence and then we just start laughing and then they both just walked through us pissed the woman was just like fuck you guys enjoy Whoa. your trip i hope you die out here <laughs> because we were so like not interested yeah. in her like but come on we're, we're tripping but so again running into like something that you know we got very centered and and controlled in this environment well that's the thing about burning man everyone's on the same page and everyone's full of acceptance like nobody yeah. greets with a hello or a handshake it's hugs like even, no matter who it is like man, hello you hug and and when you talk to people there's no what do you do how much do you make nobody talks about their careers what's the opening question at burning man? It, it's stranger. anything it's like if someone if you go up and talk to someone about fenders on a car they'll sit there and engage you or if someone walks up to you and says, I like rice, and you go, really, what kind? Or like, it's so giving and- Wow, everyone, no judgment. No judgment, it's just very, and nobody kind of talks about what they do, or it, it's just really like, it. it's really kind of loving and accepting, and it, it's just a really cool It's like everybody who moved from like a new school, like there's just clean slates yeah. across the board. And everyone. then when nighttime comes, it's just the like, it, it's, it's a carnival, oh, it, yeah. it, it's like, Remember Pinocchio when the boy yes. went to that island and turned into donkeys? Yes. And it was just a carnival of madness. Nighttime at Burning Man is just laser lights and techno music and fire breathers and 
costumes and everyone's wearing LED lights on their bodies and on it, it's 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 almost like why do drugs at that point? So, you know, I'm like hallucinate. Like I think just being sober. Would be just best hula hoops and yeah. butt play and DiGiorno pizza. And oh, do you Quiznos, do... everything. It's... Well, there's no delivery out there, so yeah. you have to do DiGiorno. <laughs> Do, do I woke you... up with a Quiznos tattoo <laughs> right over my um, Domino's tattoo. It was weird. Do you do that Finally. thing, Two Two Tuesday or whatever it is? Like, doesn't everyone wear a Two Two on Tuesdays? Am I wrong? Yeah, they yeah, do that. Do, do, it's do, like, do, do you do that? I didn't do it, but you, there's people that do it. Or they have they have certain like events where on Tuesday you you wear a tutu around, and All some right. people do it, some don't. There's oh, I there's I, so I many events. Had to. They give you a book when you go in, and it's like there's stuff going on every. Oh, cool. Oh yeah, it's it's just. Would you ever? Because you've you know you're you're pretty prolific with your stand up specials and um, your last one, uh, Caramel Corn the Pug. That was the yeah. last one, right? Yeah, yeah. Most recent, uh, all filmed as Caramel Corn the Pug. Yeah, uh, the dog. Above. Yeah, the dog, uh, which is hilarious and available on Amazon mm-hmm. and iTunes to go purchase, which I highly recommend. It's fucking Thank brilliant, you, buddy. And uh, and there's a whole behind the scenes pre and post show. Yeah, scene with Caramel Corn, which is great. You also did a special called Force of Nature. Yeah. Which is you out in the middle of the desert with just some animals and no audience. Yeah. Yeah. So it wouldn't be uh, too crazy to try to maybe do a special at Burning Man. You know, it's funny. They they have a, a, a right at the center of Burning Man. They have like a home base. And it's the only place where you can buy anything. They sell coffee and ice. That's it. That's it? That's all you can buy there. Everything else you have to bring yourself or it's a barter, barter system, system. So people will give you whatever you want. So if you're hungry and you're walking around, you walk up to someone's trailer and say, can I have a sandwich? They'll go, yeah, they'll make you a sandwich. Like it's just, it's just giving, right? Fuck. But anyways, at this, at this home tent center, it's kind of a big giant tent and they have like artists there and they have musicians and they have a stage where you can just sign a board and go up. And do whatever you want. It's you can talk about in the your world. heroin addict. You can talk about your dad. You can sing a song. You can do poetry. So one of the things at Burning Man, because of the dust storms, you have to wear ski goggles and hats and like masks to keep the dust from getting in. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go up and do stand up, but I'm going to go up incognito. So I kept my ski goggles. I, I said my name was Charlie Coconut or something, right? <laughs> so they brought me up like Charlie Coconut. And so I, <laughs> I went up and I had the ski goggles and a hat. And so nobody knew who I was. Wouldn't it be great though? Everyone's so like, there are some people that are fucked up and like, dude, I love this guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. like <laughs> things that they saw you before. But it was funny because I went up and I did my material, but just totally totally monotone like let's say i did a joke like okay so these two dogs walk into a bar right and they're really stupid and they get drunk and one of them smashes their head through a window bro but i went up and i just did so these two dogs walk into a bar and uh, they get really stupid and one of them puts their head through a window so i just did i did about 10 minutes of my act just completely without any i just sat on a stool with the micro and did it totally monotone. But just did actual Harlan bits? They were actual bits, but nobody knew it was me. And because I wasn't putting anything into it, so, yeah. and it was just, I thought I'm going to see if they laugh with just the words. No, no, like performance. No, no facial expression. No energy, and just see. And it was funny because some of them they laughed at, but nobody knew it was me. And I thought it, it was so weird because I thought to myself, you know here's a guy who's been on Letterman and Leno and like hundreds of millions of people have seen me, you know? And it's like, here I am sitting in front of about 200 people and no one knows it's this guy that they've probably seen. Most of them has probably seen me in a movie or somewhere, you know? Nope. So it was really neat. I was felt like really like, I felt like the stealth fighter. I just like, (laughs) kind of a covert set it was kind of fun at any moment was there a party that wanted to just kind of like lift the mask at the end and be no, like no because i then i would have been humiliated out. if they were like who the fuck's this guy you know because <laughs> it's not I, when i say people have seen me they've seen me it doesn't mean i'm like brad pitt where they i'm super famous you know what i mean i, I but get you right? some guys like is that the guy from the rocketeer yeah <laughs> is that the guy from quiznos is that the guy that jumped in the fuck 
Whoa, oh, too soon. come on. My but, mom's watching. But, um, but anyways, it was fun. It's, it's also a great exercise in trying to gauge the uh, level of your material, right? Like if you to maybe like do that at a... Uh, yeah, I yeah. It was, yeah. It was Ali just Wong, an experiment, you know? But totally. It was fun. <clears throat> Ali Wong was telling me she... Uh, um, telling me. She, I heard it on a podcast. She... Uh, um, D- does that at the store sometimes just to kind of like she'll do stuff in a real low whispery tone and yeah, not put all the performance her. on yeah. to kind of just see if the jokes itself yeah. have anything I think to we all do that at, at some level we kind of don't perform at our top level my, my first time I did Letterman they almost canceled me because of that I went into New York to do my first Letterman show and when you go there they, they take you around the city the night before and they run call the it set. run the set how many uh, that night it was my first time doing Letterman, and and the five they I think th- three guys came out with me, and we went to like five or six clubs. And my whole thing is, I'm coming into New York. I'm doing Letterman for the first time. There's magic to that. Yeah. I said I don't want to expend that magic no, at totally. the local clubs. I want to save the performance for that moment That's when I brilliant. walk out. Yep. I said, if I if I if I kind of do my act the way I normally do here, I'm gonna expend all that magic, and then I I, I knew it wouldn't feel wow special. So you can't recreate it, right? So so I went out and did like these five clubs with Letterman's guys sitting there watching every word, and I just kind of did it very like at a you know at a, out of a ten, I probably did it at a four, but on purpose. Yeah, and then. They told me after, after I did my first set and I rocked it, they go, Harlan, we got to tell you, we were this close to canceling you because of the sets. And I said, no, I was, I did that on purpose. Yeah, "Yeah, but we didn't know that. So it was. Did you bomb? No, I, uh, on. uh, Not on Letterman, on the, on those sets. No, I didn't bomb, but I didn't, I didn't blow it up, but I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to save the explosion for, for Letterman. And it was, um. Do you remember what Dave said to you afterwards? Well, it was, yeah, it was. Pepperidge Farm never forgets. (laughs) Pepperidge Farm remembers. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was great. The first thing he said to me said, "Uh, Harlan, it appears you have uh, peanut butter on your shoes. I I, I wasn't supposed to do panel, so I, I just did the set. Yeah. But before I went out, I put peanut butter on my boots. On the, on the top of my boots, I spread uh, Peter Pan peanut butter on my boots. It's a long story. <laughs> smooth or crunchy? Well, it was ex- smooth. Explain that long story. Then. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, when I was in college uh, 10 years earlier, I told my friends, I was still in college. I'd never done anything. I didn't even know I was going to do stand-up. But I said to my buddies, I said, guys, I'm going to be on Letterman one day. I just had this voice inside me. Weird. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know. I just know I'm going to be on Letterman one day. And they're like, what the fuck? And and when I do it, just so you remember, I'm going to put peanut butter on my boots. And so I, (laughs) 10 years later, I did it. I put the peanut butter on. And I remember all my buddies phoning me the next day. Losing their fucking mind. They couldn't believe it. But but Dave loved it so much, he called me and I'd ended up doing panels. So the first thing he asked me about after my set was, why is there peanut butter on? Uh, your uh, boot? Harlan, it, it, it seems you got uh, yeah, uh, is that a peanut butter on your boot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god! Why did he call you to panel? What, what were you promoting at the time? Were you just doing stand up? No, I was just stupid. Just and supposed they, and to they, do stand up and cool. get out. Cool. But that then he was so amused by the the peanut butter that I ended up doing a whole extra awesome. segment with them. Did you have any jokes said, or did you just kind of tell the story? No, we just riffed and we talked, and he asked me about the the whole story about the shoes, and yeah, it was pretty fun, man. You're always so good on the. Uh, uh, on every show, I, I'm, you know, I, I would just venture to assume you're probably partial to Conan uh, throughout the years, just because of the amount of like play that there is and back and forth. Yeah, and it I seems like, like them all. I like them all, but Conan and I definitely had a, a, a special chemistry. Yeah, you, you know, do. like we uh, from the get go, man. Those, I mean, I have gone down rabbit holes sometimes of just like oh, first okay. times of you on his early late night show because that's yeah, <clears throat> that was I loved Letterman, but Conan in the late night slot. <clears throat> is when I truly became like, you know, when you got to see so these good. people that yeah. you liked in movies and TV shows, that was the only other way to see them be kind of like this. Right? Yeah, right. And so to see you on those things and, and Conan was uh, just so <laughs> generous with the, uh, yeah, the was, silliness. No, he was great, man. Yeah. He, he was, 
Norm is great with him too, and you got you and Norm almost have similar kind of sensibilities too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah they had yeah. great chemistry. Yeah, 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 no, he he was really. Uh, we have, we have a good vibe. So where are you um, with stand up right now? Where are you? Uh, you're still going up a lot. I love that you're at the store now a lot, which is great. Yeah, I work at the comedy <laughs> store a lot here in town, and uh, going on the road a little. I think I'm up in uh, Calgary, Alberta, with Tom Green in uh, same show. Uh, I think not in two weeks. So me and Tom will be up at the the Laugh Stop in Calgary, Alberta. That's a famous club, yeah? Yeah, it's been around for like years. It's not where you started, is it? It's one of the clubs I, I did when I first started doing the circuit in Canada when I was starting out. Wow, Still they're going there. fucking nuts. Yeah, so it'll be really cool. Our, uh, that's, I mean, Toronto, what, Yuck Yuck's there is the hometown show if you yeah. want to do one. Yeah. But, I mean, do you feel like just can... Uh, Canada in general like owns you guys so it's like anywhere you go there's going to be a bigger reception yeah I mean you know the, it's it's like anywhere you know when you go home somewhere it's like usually people like to come out and see you so it, it, it's neat it's neat to go back and you know the whole thing about Canadians it's 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 another level of impossibility to get anywhere yeah in this industry because you know it's one thing if you're born in the u.s you can just say hey i'm gonna go to hollywood or i'm gonna go to new york or i'm gonna get in the entertainment industry in america but in canada there's the whole barrier of immigration and right. and money and citizenship and 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 working legal legally working and so so uh it, it's just another big hurdle to trying to get to where you want to go and uh so it's neat when you go back and i think canadians recognize that you kind of took those risks to try and get there by yeah. moving away and so i think they show appreciation by coming out and supporting do you have um uh old friends or teachers that uh will hit you up i'm always curious for people that have been doing you're coming up on like what maybe 25 30 years of stand -up. Man. Yeah. yeah it's ridiculous it's i can't believe amazing. i started in 84 where at in Toronto. Oh, in Toronto. Yeah, it just blows my mind. Uh, it doesn't feel like it, by the way, but it that's where we're at. It doesn't? No, it doesn't. I still feel like a freaking kid. It's bizarre. Do you, do you still, even just driving around LA, have flashbacks like when you first got here? Which was shortly, yeah. did it, was it... Um, what was the was it, Dumb and Dumber wasn't what got brought you out here, was it? No, I no. came out here with nothing. With nothing, that's right. Yeah, I just came out here on a, actually not nothing. It was that voice. It's that same voice that said you're going to be on Letterman one day. I, that's what pulled me out here. I I just I knew I was going to be on it, and I I thought well, this voice is telling me to come to L.A. and the voice it, it it sounds I know nutty, but it it's always been this inner voice that's kind of guided me. Does it start with a work with a work visa and then you can come here? <laughs> no, I meant who says I'm legal? How does that work? I don't, I don't know. No, it, it happens with uh, you, you have to actually. What I started with was um was um work visas. Yeah, that were they lasted like two three years at a pop. Yeah. And then once you're here on the work visa, then hopefully you're getting work where you can put enough proof of work right. together where you can then go to the next phase where you can apply for a green card. Then you then you have to get approved for a green card. And what, What's a green card exactly? Like you can stay for like seven years or something? I, a I, green card, you can stay for six years, okay. but all you have to do is renew the green card to, to stay for another six. You don't okay. have to go through all the rigmarole. And then the next step is to become a citizen, so. Are you a citizen? Now I am, yeah, yeah. It's like a video game, you keep. <laughs> it is, it's like, oh, for sure. like citizenship, like the later. video game. <laughs> Cause how, yeah, yeah. Do you, how do you get the green card? Does someone sign off for you? Does Adam sign, up, you, sign you up for it? Or? Do you have to have references? Yeah, you have to have, ref, you have, to have <laughs> people write letters of record, like prominent people in the industry. You Got have it. to have a sponsor, so I had to have a, I had to have a sponsor here, and in, in th that's when I first came down. I had a sponsor who was a manager. It's like in, an uh, AA uh, AA twelve step program. Yeah, it, it, that's what I mean. It's like people don't realize that. I think people ask why are Canadians so funny and why have so many Canadians made it because yeah. I th I think guys like Jim Carrey and Mike Myers and Howie Mandel and and Candy, Michael J. Fox Miami's, and yeah. Matthew Perry and. <sighs> Leslie Nielsen and all these God. famous funny Canadians. I, I think it's because it's so much work just to get here mm -hmm. that, okay, we're funny, but we're also like 
we came here to kick ass. We came here. We don't want to go back with our tail between our legs. And so I think extra a lot drive, of it huh? is there's this extra drive with Canadian guys to really like. It's a time quotient. Time, it is. Time you know, is a I, I came here with every cent I owned. I had about, I think I came down here with about $18,000 back in 84 and and that was after working for six years to build that was all my savings holy shit and i said i'm gonna go till this is gone and i was down to about four grand when things after you exchanged the eighteen thousand. no i had 20 <laughs> okay and then, and, okay and got i it, got lost it. like two and a half just with the exchange so that's Ooh. another little hurdle <laughs> that's when you only so have a rough. little bit of money that that hurts too the worst yeah. you do a gig in canada yeah you get paid and you're like yeah i got two thousand dollars you come back you're like oh 13 yeah. Yeah. yeah but but um so i was down to my last probably i think about four thousand dollars when things just started to click do you remember that moment did you have a little bit of like look in the mirror like you know i don't know how but i need to turn things up i need to get a little more active and go to do some casting workshops or something you know or what just i like, never did I, ha I had that voice inside i've, I've never been a panic guy i was that i was very blessed because i always just i've never worried i've always been like it's gonna happen just trusted in what you got uh, the voice man and, and it always did everything i thought was gonna happen happened it's like a positive schizophrenia it is it's weird <laughs> yeah. but it, it, well, you it, do need that delusion right we've talked about it like in to be out here and and a uh, overall like arcing uh, belief that it's just like you have to have that and it's not it helps, it's an acquired skill set sure. like yeah. some people I mean shit the amount of kids I went to acting school with in college that don't I'd say in the 25 kids that I started with freshman year in the uh, in the acting program senior year we uh, had maybe 17 and then now I think maybe there's maybe one that's still pursuing it wow so yeah. it's like there's it's it's uh, easier said than done to just be like I'm gonna go for it and then just keep going for it. Oh yeah, man. It's, it's, I mean, when I look at all the guys I started with in Toronto doing stand up with, like I think Norm McDonald is the, me and him were coming up at the same time working together. And I think he's the only guy that really Stuck out of that out. whole group wow. really popped, you know, and out of, and all those guys, I'll say it on record, were super funny and talented. You know, all these guys I worked with and, and to see that, like, me and Norm are the guys that kind of popped through, it's just it's just weird. It'd be know? cool to do a uh, some sort of Netflix doc and go back and find all those guys and, like, you and Norm, like, do a big show and pull all those people. Like, there's a show that on Netflix right now, or I think it's on Disney Plus, that Kristen Bell gets old people that used to do high school plays together, musicals. That sounds depressing. It kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> I went it's to the a high opposite school. of Burning Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, burn That's you, the title. man. Yeah. Burn you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get all these people, yeah, like to come Yearning back and, man. and and they did the plays like they did, you know, Greece or whatever. And so they Greece. get the girl back and she's like, hey, guys. And they're like, Jill. And she's like, yeah, I was Sandy. And they're like, fuck. You know, and then they see the uh, guy and like, yeah. and, there's, and then it's they put too the, depressing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I was going to say you get, uh, you and Norm get all the, the old. Well, not that these other, I don't know what a lot of these other guys are doing. That I, might be I, fun. I just know that. A lot of the guys I, I worked with, I haven't seen them right. in movies or TV or That's whatever, fine. but it doesn't mean they're not doing great things. What if they're still just, all very funny just in normal everyday jobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that their lives went off the rails, but I'm just saying how hard it is to to pop through and even yeah. get a commercial is, a, is tough. A you Trix know? commercial. Yeah, that's right. Wasn't that your first one? Uh, tricks commercial? No, it wasn't my first. It wasn't. One. Wow. My first commercial, I think, was a, a humble. This is how naive I was. I think my first commercial was a Super Bowl ad, Holy and I didn't shit. even know the significance of it. Yeah. Holy shit! It was for, so weird. For what product? It was for Budweiser. Oh my god! Yeah, it was. Remember what you did? Yeah, it was me and this girl, and we're out on safari in Africa. We shot it up in north, like like up near. Uh, I don't know, Oxnard or something right. out, the out in the hills. California. Yeah, and um, and the the gimmick was we had a, a a Land Rover with a roof rack, and on the roof rack was a cooler, and they had like eight trained chimps from an old one all the way down to a baby. So it's kind of like those Russian dolls. Yeah. So, so what they did is while we were parked looking at like a zebra crossing the road, 
the monkeys formed a chain and the big one went up, opened the cooler, and then they handed the cans of beer right down to the baby. Oh my and then God. they all ran away. <laughs> I think it won an award or something. But Sounds I, like it. But I didn't know anything about the Super Bowl. Like in Canada, I didn't watch football. No. I didn't know anything. So I, I didn't even realize it was a big deal. But And we allowed you to be a citizen? Uh, this is when I was on a working permit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Give me that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, you're saying we allowed him to be a citizen not knowing what the Super Bowl is? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That oh, should be, I that see. That okay. should be on the questionnaire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, what is the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah, you um, can't book a Super Bowl commercial and not know what it is. That's not fair. I had no freaking clue. <laughs> I, I had no idea. They, they even told me, like, yeah, it's going to be on Super Bowl. I was like, okay. Like, I didn't is that know, a new network? Yeah. I didn't know Super Bowl was a big thing. I didn't know Thanksgiving <laughs> was a big thing. In Canada, it's not that big a deal. But when I got here, it was like, everyone's like, Thanksgiving, you're going home. I'm going to... Who flies home for Thanksgiving? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's weird. You know that we protect you guys from the world, right? You can at least <laughs> st <laughs> study up on the Super Bowl. <laughs> Since you don't have an aircraft carrier. We at least clearly don't deserve to be protected <laughs> after all this crap. Yeah, you don't think, you don't think uh, you know, people want to come over here and kill all you white people up there? <laughs> they do, trust me. <laughs> Friend of yours? Yeah. <laughs> I do want to ask, um, we got about 10 more minutes if you're cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one question, because I mentioned, um, I thought Dumb and Dumber was what brought you out. I thought uh, we, we had talked about that at some point in our friendship. And I've told you my favorite movie of all time. And I was watching it there at night and crying laughing. And I don't know if you've ever talked about this. And I know I've either had the question or maybe you've uh, touched on it. But I remember you telling me uh, something that blew my mind about your scene in that movie. Um, uh, he actually the, drank piss. I yeah, well, yeah, it, it was the, it was, you know, cause that obviously a scene stealing like that, I used to tell you like in, in middle school, like we used to do that noise and impersonate you and, and people would have that scene memorized yeah. and it was that iconic. And then I remember you telling me, and maybe you can refresh my memory uh, for our audience about, because the Fairley brothers were pretty generous with imp improv, right? Right, yeah. But, um, but can you just remind me and tell people like why that was so special that that, because there was a lot of you taking a gamble early on in something that, uh, that maybe you wouldn't otherwise, but again, you trusted in what you had. Oh, well, yeah, with that movie, it was my first movie. Right. So I was pretty terrified. We were out on a country road and it was just like the crew, the Farrelly brothers directing, and then Jim Carrey, who was blowing up. And uh, Jeff Daniels, who had been, you know, nominated for Oscars. And so here was I from Canada who didn't even know what the Super Bowl really was. <laughs> and now I'm out in this Is this road. movie for the Super Bowl too? <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm, I'm there shooting and I'm, I'm a little terrified. You know, I've never done anything, you know. Hadn't even been on a set. Well, I, I'd done the commercials, but that was it. I gotcha. never had to memorize lines really or anything like With that. movie stars. Or, do a scene, you know yeah. what I mean? So it was pretty, pretty intimidating. And and so uh, I had my lines down, and then uh, we did about, I don't know, three takes straight from the script. I was too scared to do anything else. And then the Farrelly's, Peter came up to me, he goes, uh, Harlan, uh, do, it, do it the Harlan way now. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you know, do the Harlan thing. And I'm like, the Harlan thing? He goes, yeah, you know. Do it your own way. And I, I said, okay. And as soon as he said that, I was like, here we go. You got excited? I got excited. Nervous I, though too to be little, like. I was nervous, but I was also like, here we go. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to rip the lid off of this thing. And so so I just, I just, we did the scene and I used the script as a framework, but I just started adding and improvising. And, you know, the first time I did it, I cracked Jim and, and Jeff up and then. Oh then they had me do it like three, four more times like that. And I could hear the crew laughing and I could hear, you know, it was just like magic. And, and so I was just able to like, just make stuff up in the moment. Pumpkin and, pie hair, cutted freak. Yeah. yeah. That. You, you somehow have the funniest. Wait, that was improvised? Huh? <laughs> Pumpkin pie hair, cutted freak. Yeah, that, that, that came from. <laughs> Is that you like that one? You oh, dude, that? we used to say it nonstop. We'd say, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. The people that didn't even have that haircut just You'll because be it was. amazed where that came from. So when I was a kid up at our cottage, we had a cottage up in northern Ontario in the summer. We'd go there and we had a book of, um, of what's it called? Not fairy tales, but. Uh, limericks. Not limericks, but uh, folk tales or whatever. Yeah. Like Mother Goose. Oh, yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. Like that. And there was the story about the Peter Pumpkin 
pie eater and he'd sit in the corner and stick in his thumb and pull out a plum. Oh yeah. One. Oh yeah. Peter Pie Kid or something. Yeah. So there was a there was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There yeah, was that's this it. book with that <laughs> story, right? The Peter Pumpkin Pie Eater or whatever. <laughs> Peter Pumpkin Eater. Peter Peter Pumpkin yeah. Eater. That's yeah. what she said. And uh, <laughs> and um and you know, this book had illustrations in it. And one of the illustrations for the pump for the pie one was this little fat kid with a haircut that went right across like Jim's bangs in something in uh, like uh, Dumb, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. And so as I was improvising, I looked at his bangs and that that thing from my childhood popped into my head, that illustration of the, the kid eating the pie, <laughs> the pumpkin pie. So I just said, give me that booze, you little pumpkin pie haircut in three. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was based off that stupid illustration I saw when I was a little boy of this kid in a corner with a pie at his feet. Oh my god! And, and were you supposed to drink the beer to begin with, or did you improvise that too? No, I was supposed to drink okay, the beer, good. but what 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 they they uh, no they didn't lose it because they that they, they left it in. But no, I meant the gym like. Did he no, the after we cut, they were howling, but. But then um, the beer scene with the funny noise, like the dolphin noise, yes. that was um, based on the. Uh, I had done a bunch of takes, and then, and then uh, I had done stand up for the Farrellys. They came to see me at the Laugh Factory here in Hollywood um, before we shot. Wow! And they saw me do um, stand up, and I used to do this bit when when Whitney Houston was you know popping, and she did that movie, The Bodyguard. Yeah. She did that song, I Will Always Love You. And there was a point in the song where she said, I will always love you. And her voice kept going higher and higher and higher. And I used to do a bit like, what if her voice went so high she started doing a whale call? You know, like I just went, I will love you. You know, and then I'd be like. <laughs> and, and the Fairleys, so we'd done all these takes and they said, uh, do, do it again. And this time do the whale noise. And I go, what do you mean? They go, do the whale noise in, in the take. And I go, I go, where? Well, they go, we don't know. And I said, okay. <laughs> so then I just, the thought, yeah, I just thought, you know, what if the guy like drank this bottle and it was piss and, and piss has, no one drinks piss. So I thought, what if it caused a weird chemical reaction when it hit the enzymes of a human's mouth? And it was just like, it was like, <laughs> you know, it, it made... <laughs> It caused you your face to have like an involuntary like spasm yeah. and make that noise. So that's where I put it in. Oh my and god! And that's where they they left it, and it was just it really it, somehow it worked. I couldn't believe it. Iconic. But. Did you think know as you're doing it, you're like, no. is this just so silly? Like, all dude, right. I was in that movie for I think two three minutes at the most, if no. that. And no. I just thought I'd be blown by. I thought I'd be forgotten because they're powerhouses, and it's them the whole movie. Oh yeah, so I didn't like, think. I thought I was like a, a throwaway scene. But then, but then, I remember the first time it ever happened. I was down at the Beverly Center. I can see it right out this window, and I remember the movie had been out for about six weeks. And I was walking to my car on the sidewalk on La Siena again. This crowd of like, like probably twelve-year-old schoolboys <laughs> walking down the sidewalk, like probably about twelve of them. And I was just minding my business, and all of a sudden they swarmed around me, and they're going. Are you the guy? You're the cop with the the making the. And I was like, I was like, well, how do you know that? And then I re, that was the first time I realized like, and they were quoting the lines and yeah. stuff. And I went, that's awesome. How weird is that? You know? Did you ever get like anyone that was like serving you at a restaurant and be like, hey? Psst. Oh yeah, I, I was at a fancy. I was in a fancy restaurant in Montreal once steak lobster and i was i was walking through it had a nice meal you know expensive and i was walking as i was walking across the restaurant to leave some lady goes hey piss drinker <laughs> <laughs> like, right. so it has its ups and its down did you, you do know? it did you do the noise back no to it? i was just humiliated <laughs> that's one of their no. famous dishes actually yeah. at that restaurant can i get another piss drinker <laughs> oh, it was, oh my yeah. god uh, that's amazing. And that's also, I mean, you know, hearing you even just like dissect being, you know, on a set like that, that's so intimidating. Yeah. That is, and you to come through like that, because again, and that's why I was asking, like, how nervous were you when they said, all right, like the ball's in your court to, to really bring the funny on this. Like that can also be overwhelming to where you're like, all right, I know I can do this, but you know, you don't want to let the moment get too big to where you 
don't end up bringing what you know you can do. And then you walk away from it being like, but it sounds like you just fucking. I think I felt empowered. I, I, I think I felt like they let me out of the cage, you know, and I thought, okay, yeah. now, you know, I, I feel like. That made you comfortable too, because probably making them laugh and them getting to see you do your thing, that probably just grounded you completely, right? Well, I didn't expect that, but I just thought, I feel like when we all get into comedy, we all go, look, I've got a voice. I've got my own way of expressing comedy. I've, I think I can make people laugh in my own way. And so when they let me get outside of the script, my inner voice was able to go, okay, now they get to see what makes me me, you know? Yeah. Like what makes me Harland or Jim Jim or whatever, you know? It's like now I'm going to be able to just let what's in me come out. And, and, and it was great. It actually like gave me power. Like I was like. How do they find you to begin with? Uh, they found me through Jim actually. Jim, Jim was um Jim was doing uh, stand up at the at the local clubs, right when I got into. Oh, town. he was still doing stand up then. He was yeah. doing stand up still, and he so I was we're doing spots with them, and he just loved me, and he uh yeah I could see that he um he he asked them to come see me at the club, oh. and then he he asked me to that he got me in for the audition. How, and, how old were you at the time? I think I was I, like I got here late, so I think I was here. I think I was like thirty or well, thirty-one or something. Nerve-wracking when the Fairley Brothers come see you at the show, or again was it this not, moment where you're like, "Nah, time really? for me to." Really? Because yeah. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know there was. A, <laughs> I didn't know there was a movie brewing. I didn't know. Oh wow! I mean, I was clueless, dude. When I when I went in to read for Dumb and Dumber, read on quotes, I literally went down to Santa Monica. I walked up. I walked in, Bobby and Peter were there, and as we said our hellos, and I sat down, they said, okay, great, Harlan, did you bring your script? And I went, what script? And Bobby just looked at me and goes, this is our guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is our guy. Like, I, I literally move. didn't <laughs> even come in with a script. I, I just thought you met. <laughs> I thought you met and talked and, you know, they, they see how they like you. Like I, So I was just <laughs> Drink clueless. Drink this piss. Yeah, yeah I was drinker. That was me at the restaurant. Yo, who are you betting on the Super Bowl this year? He goes, what's the Super Bowl? He goes, you're booked. Yeah. <laughs> I was really clueless, but I think that was kind of what helped me get through everything too, because I I was a bit naive to everything. That's were they even those guys at that point too? Because what what what, what did oh, yeah. they, oh, they directed were, at that? What what did, I had think they directed they had at that? Done. Point? Uh, so this was Dumb and Dumber. I th no, I think they had. Mary was after a couple that, right? Super Bowl commercials. Yeah, Mary was definitely. Mary after was that. That. Yeah, they were just they were just popping. This that's right. why they put you in Mary. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another. I mean, and you know, you've talked about it before, but another just you know, <laughs> insanely like. Car uh, so because of Dumb and Dumber and what you did when they let you out of the cage, did they let you out of the cage from the get go? Then for something about Mary? No, same thing. They they like they like get a few. And and it, it's not just them. I do it. I do it off the book to show respect to the process and, and to the movie and That's the right writers. Move. And so I I give it. And then after one or two takes, whether they ask me to, to or not, I start going wild. But they they once again asked me to just let it rip, and I was like, I'm gladly. What? So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. What's you know? Ben Stiller like? Uh, he was great, and in, 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 you know, in that moment, he was great. I don't think the scene would have worked without him because he, I was being so crazy, and he right. was just being so normal and perfect straight man. He was a great straight man, and he really and he was cracking up in between takes. But he, when it came to just letting me be that psycho serial killer, he just. He knew his role, and, and, and he I worked off of it so great, you know. I'll tell you who else is a great straight man. The Burning Man, who I yeah. hope we all see mm -hmm. come next fall. Yeah. Fall, right? Yeah. And speaking of men, can I tell you about my latest project? Oh, yes. Actually, no, we'll, put it the, we'll close the episode with it. So, Harlan, uh, you've been in so many countless TV shows, movies, stand-up specials. You've created your own content. You've had your own killer podcast. Yeah. And now you're embarking on a new series. Yes. Called... Two guys in their underpants. Excuse me? Hello, Pepperidge <laughs> Farm. Ream members. Um. Where the fuck? You sent me this video yeah. when you were like, hey, bud, uh, when I come on the pod, I want to plug the show. And I was yeah. like, for sure. Great production value. Insane. But it's, I mean, again, we'll, we'll show it. Uh, where, you know, I don't know where most of your ideas come from. Yeah. Where did this one come from? All right, so these this show's called Two Guys in Their Underpants because I was in a craft shop years ago, like probably 15 years ago maybe. Okay. 
And I, for some reason, they have these two little dolls, like kind of like generic made in China, like Barbie doll, but they're Ken doll. They're kind of, they're not yeah. Ken dolls, but they look like sort of like Ken dolls, ambiguous white guys. Like Ken's friend. Yeah, and, and they all they had on were white boxer briefs and black loafers. <laughs> and I picked a couple of them up, and I thought, for some reason, these are talking to me. Like, they're they're funny. They're, I just thought they're so, they're so like, generic white guys. Yeah. And the fact that they're wearing white boxer briefs. <laughs> and that's I, it. They, it just, something made me laugh. So I bought them. How much? I think they were, like, four bucks each. Awesome. They're just nothing. And, and, and so... A long time ago, I shot a little video of them like climbing an orange tree, <laughs> and and it was like two minutes long. And I showed it to some people, and they were, were really like excessively laughing, like more than I thought. So I thought, well, maybe I'll shoot some more. So I started shooting some more, and like I'd show them to friends, and they'd be busting up laughing, real like really hard. And I was like, there's something to this. So then I started taking them with me wherever I traveled all over the world and I take my camera and so I've been shooting episodes called Two Guys in Their Underpants. I've shot them at Burning Man. I've shot them in Saudi Arabia. I've thrown them over Niagara Falls. I just posted an episode this week where they're fucking the St. Louis Arch. <laughs> <laughs> finally. Mean, yeah, finally. But but it's just ridiculous because they're, they're, they're dolls, so I can put them in. And it's kind of like Beavis and Butthead yes. meet Mr. Bill. And so what a great they're physical yeah. and they're violent and they're <laughs> ridiculous. And the, so I can put them in the weirdest situations and I'm having a blast with it. So I've got 21 episodes. Holy shit! Yeah, and I'm, it's, a, it's it's a whole season, and uh, all twenty one are available now. Well, I put a new one up every ten days. Okay. So we've put, so far I've posted five, but they're exclusively on uh, a digital platform called Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com backslash Harland Williams, you can join. It's a, it's kind of like a, like a cable station. You pay right. five bucks a month for Good access to, to, for access to Great. see it and and. It's not just that show, but I'm going to be putting up other content as well. It's kind of a page where creative people can put their stuff, yeah. and fans of your stuff can pay to see it, and yeah. and and their paying helps finance the stuff. Fuck so, yeah. so I've been just shooting these damn uh, two guys in their underpants episodes like like crazy and having a blast. They're also shot beautifully. Like that's the other thing too. Is oh, that thank like, you. Are you DP in this and like? Just... I do everything. I'm the I'm I'm literally the only one there. I hold them. I move them. <laughs> oh, I... dude, the trailer like it's fucking. Yeah, I got them on fishing lines. I like slide them. I I I, I mean the the stu- The I, I'm like a Cirque du Soleil guy. I'm, I'm <laughs> there's no one there but me. I'm just doing it all, and it's that's actually part of the fun too. It's it's not only creative. You know, writing them and but shooting them's like there's a lot of direction that goes into them because they're that they don't have articulating mouths or anything. They're just kind of stiff. Yeah. So I've got to create a lot of movement with the cutting right. and, and the way I shoot it. Right. And and uh, where do you I, do it? I do voiceover for all the for the two dolls and uh, it's really ridiculous. What are their names? They don't have names. I've left them very ambiguous. They they look very ambiguous. They're the same doll, but I just took one and with a sharpie and put a mustache on it, and so they look different. But I purposely made them very. Um, you don't know if they're gay or straight or like they're just both, ambiguous, both, weird. Yeah. You, you don't know. They don't have names. They're just two guys in their underpants roaming the planet. So <laughs> Sam loves it. Yeah. Is there a, an arc to the season? Like, will something, can we expect new characters to be Yeah, introduced? there's a new character coming up. I did one where they play horse, they go into a celebrity horseshoe tournament, <laughs> and the guy hosting it is another doll who's got curly hair, and his name's Melvin Cinnamon, the boy from the palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> and he talks like this. He's having a celebrity horseshoe tournament. <laughs> and what he does, the... The guys show up at a horseshoe pit, but he can't find his horseshoes, so he makes them play horseshoes with their spread. So he, he's they're throwing at each other at the metal pole with their crotches. It's, it's just ridiculous. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, dude. it's really fun. This so it's just you. really stupid. Twenty-one yeah. apps, man. Yeah, if you, if you like you weird, crazy, yeah, everybody does. Just like silly. 
I think you'll really like it. So patreon.com slash backslash Harlan, Harlan William. Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. Oh my God. Fun. You know, it, it's also like, you're always so good at just like creating stuff that, that, uh, you know, Hey man, puppy dog pals is going into what, what season? Season four. Holy shit. Yeah. Over a couple hundred eps. Yeah, it's, it's if not crazy. more. Yeah. I I'm, watch it every day, and I'm not kidding. Are you my, serious? My, my daughter is obsessed oh, with it. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know, I was going to ask if there's going to be a crossover episode of Puppy Dog Pals with two guys in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm like crossing that. my fingers for. That would be, I would love to do that. Do you know the Puppy Dog Pals theme song? Do you want, am, am I being prompted to sing it? Because I hope so. Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> Bingo and Rolly, couple of puppies that bark and chase and chew. And there's a guy named Bob who makes up inventions a couple puppies can use. See you later, when Bob's pups. Bob's away. See you later, pups. The pups will play on a mission around the world trying to save the day. Pup, 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 puppy dog pals. Bark, bark, bark. Pup, 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 puppy dog Continuous. Oh, man, he knows it all. Oh, my God. Come to Burning Man and let's all do it. Let's get on the stage with the masks and do that at Burning Man. Oh, that's hilarious. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, that was pretty good. Well, uh, you're the best. Thank Love you, you, brother. So you're much. the best. I can't wait to go uh, to a movie again with you and not enjoy it. I know. Let's go. Hey, we found a good. You know, the first movie we ever saw together was Johnny English, and we walked oh, out of it in Minnesota. <laughs> and yeah. so then it was like every, and then it happened a couple other times, and we were just like, "Fucking another Johnny what English." A, yeah. What a load. Yeah. But it was great to see you, buddy. Great Thank to see you it. for uh, and uh, check out my Instagram and my Twitter. It's all at, at Harlan Williams and uh, HarlanWilliams.com for tour dates. Yeah, HarlanWilliams.com and uh, get on Patreon uh, yeah. dot com and check out two guys in their underpants. I think I think it'll be worth the wait. Every ten days, a new episode, but it just gets wilder and wilder. I can't wait. I'm telling you, the trailer is so fun. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We'll put it up at the end of this episode and go check it out. And uh, guys, one more time. Thank you, buddy. Time. Thanks, guys. Bye, buddy. <laughs> They're two guys in their underpants Just two guys in their underpants They like yeah, hands yeah. and they like hands They like to part and like to dance Jumping around in their underpants Traveling the world from Detroit to France Just two guys in their underpants <laughs> yeah.